Dino Spark has been announced just a few days ago, but people are already using it. So let's have a look of some of the micro apps that users are already creating. Let's begin with the first one, that is a mermaid diagram creator. This is the markup for a mermaid diagram, and let's see what we can do. And instead of writing the syntax manually, I can say add another server, and I'll expect something else to appear here. And there's also a version history down there. But let's continue what else we can do. Like each server has its own database. And with that, I'm expecting, yep, to have another line here. Let's see if there are many clients and this should also expand. Well, there's just one. Add more client nodes. Let's see if this works. And yep, there it is. And here I can obviously also um, update the syntax manually. Let's say core of, and I can add content. And here I obviously got the entire history. But the thing is, what can I do with this markup? Well, in case you didn't know, Mermaid is supported on GitHub. So if you're creating a new issue, but really anywhere you can write some markdown text here on GitHub, and you paste the code inside a kind of block code, but instead of um, the language, like TypeScript, you add Mermaid. If you go on the preview, this is exactly what is rendered. You can also interact with this, but this is specific to GitHub. And you can use, for example, a tiny Spark app created in probably just a few minutes to have a really simple generator for your mermaid diagrams. And for reference, this has been created by this user just a few days ago. But let's move on to the next one. This is an account generator. I think I can create an account, it just generates some data. But I see there's a setting. But the value here is not the data. The thing is that in case you have some application that maybe has to generate some fake data, you might create a specific generator exactly for your needs. Not just for you as a developer, but also for the QA department or any other department that needs to create fake data for the application. But let's try to improve this one a little bit. I can start by forking it. And in this case, this generates some data, but I want to easily copy and paste it. So here I want to refine my Spark and say, add a box with the JSON representation. And with that, and usually it, it, it isn't really fast right now. It probably takes a few seconds. And after a few seconds, this uh, block appeared. And now every time I click generate account, I see that not only it generates the name and uh, all the data here, but also the value is here and I need to be copy pasted. And actually there's a, copy JSON button, I can probably click it and let's see if it worked. Um, no, it didn't work and that's also a cool thing of Spark. I really wanted to show this on a demo. So the copy button doesn't work. Let's try to fix it with GitHub Spark. So copy button doesn't work. Let's also try to change model. Probably GPT-40 is, I noticed that for some queries it is slightly faster, at least here on Spark. So let's give it a try and see what happens once again. So it took me a while to understand why the copy JSON button didn't work. And actually by looking at the code, I noticed that there's a function here that is the one responsible to copy into the clipboard. And if it works, it also sends an alert copy to clipboard that doesn't really work effectively here. And if I open the dev tools, well, there's the answer. This seems to be actually disabled here. So that's a simple answer why it wasn't working. But in any case, let's say I can still just select everything, control C and control V and everything works pretty much as expected. Obviously even with the generated data. Yep. Let's go back to the video. By the way, if I go back, this is the user who created that last week. But let's go on the last example I've got for today, that this time it's a game, and that's another really cool usage of GitHub Spark. You can basically create a mini game here with just prompt in natural language, and not only you, the developer, again, but maybe even your son, why not? Everyone can really try to have fun and create a game. In this case, it's a Minesweeper, and now I want to win. So this is um, an hexagonal version, I need to stay focused. An hexagonal version of this game. Um, one is here. Sorry, now I have to, to complete this. 
So this is one, two, it has to be here. Um, yep. Yep. Two, they should be fine. Um, I got this. I got this one. This is empty here, here. Yes. So, um, <laughs> this looks kind of broken, but I think if I can go here on the team, I can select light mode. Yeah. So, um, the model doesn't really, uh, look fine in the dark mode, but it's fine on the light mode. I think this might be fixed and I can submit my school. Um, well, there it is. I really think that this tool is not even trying to steal our job as a developers, but it's on the other side, enabling more, um, not exactly developers, but everyone who wants to create a really simple application specifically designed for their needs to just pin up a few prompts and have a working example ready to be shared. This was a really short video about GitHub Spark creation, but in case you were wondering where did I find them? Well, there's the GitHub Next Discord server where you can find plenty of examples made by other users. You can chat with the GitHub Next team. So I highly recommend you joining this server. And with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this really quick video about GitHub Spark. As you notice, it's not even trying to steal our job. It's more of a tool for literally everyone, not only developers, to create micro applications that solve one specific need. And I think it's going to be fun to see what people will come out with this simple tool. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.